Hey guys, it's James here from ebassguitar.com and if you're interested in the five string bass, I'm gonna give you my five steps to getting started with the five string bass. Please do check this lesson out all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBass Guitar. And one of the questions I get asked so much in my Bass Lab Plus membership uh, community is what bass should I be playing? I'm playing a four string, should I be playing a five string? And what benefits does it have? So what I thought I'd do is give you a quick lesson, a quick tour, and my five steps to getting started with the five string bass. There is a PDF cheat sheet, cheat sheet which accompanies this lesson called five steps to five strings please do check out the description below and you can download that there so the number one thing I want you to think about is why do you want to play the five string bass what benefit is it going to bring to your playing and there could be a bunch of things that it brings to it maybe it's professionally or the sort of music you're playing uh, it demands the five string so I spend a lot of time uh, working in musical theatre particularly in the West End of London and so many of those shows were actually written for the five string bass and that's why I spent a good period of probably 10 to 12 years playing it exclusively so uh, the musical directors there, the supervisors, they would uh, write medleys a lot of the time and so they'd be putting a few songs together and they want to try and keep the key signatures consistent or maybe it was a the musical theatre loves doing key changes too so going up and so you're always going through a wide variety of keys. Maybe you play heavy metal music and you want to get some really really low notes and so you that extended range that it gives you could be really really useful too or maybe there's another reason that you love the more ergonomic nature of the uh, fretless fretless the five string bass because what happens the crucial thing to understand is when you get more strings is all the patterns that you know and you love from the four string start to replicate themselves more often let me give you an example say you're a blues player you can go Okay, well that's more of a rock and roll thing really, but you see the idea. We could do that without having that big shift from down here to down here. We now have that shape. Okay, and so, that we can replicate all over the next. So these shapes we can move around. So there are a lot more movable shapes there. Um, it might be that you love the effect that the five string brings of bringing some low notes into it. So I want you to think about why specifically you want to play the five string. It might be that you just want to try it out and see what it brings and that's completely cool too. So think about very carefully why you want to play the five string. One last thing I'll say before I move on to the next tip is that Everything you play on the bass guitar, uh, you should be able to play on a four string bass. So stylistically, whether you're playing rock, pop, funk or blues, the core of everything that you do should be uh, possible to play on a five string, on, on a four string bass even. Uh, the bass is just the vehicle um, to play the music and what starts to happen is the options just change a little bit so you uh, you may get some extended range with a five string uh, you might want to play a seven string fretless but the fundamentals of say playing blues still remain the same so what I would encourage you to do is think about the music first and then think about putting the right bass to it that you want to play. So step number two is decide what tuning you want to play. There is one tuning which I would hazard a guess at that 90% of bass players use, myself included, and that is to put the extra string on the bottom, like so. There is another tuning that bass players use, which is where they put the string on the top. So with, when you put a low string on there, the chances are you will put a low B on there, so you put a fourth below, like that. And that is what the majority of us will use in day-to-day -day 
work because it will add that extended range in there which sounds really cool but people will use a bass that has a high C too so we're adding the, a fourth on the top there and that is generally used for more soloistic music where people want to play chords and melodies up the top end so it's a little more synonymous with the world of jazz and fusion and that kind of thing or if you're into doing chord melody and yeah playing solos on the bass so think about why you want to have those have that extended range uh, for me i love the low end of the five string uh, i depped uh, quite a bit over the years on a queen show called we will rock you that was in the west end of london and one of the things that they used the five string for in there was uh, at the front of the tune i want it all it had this amazing just hitting this amazing big fat low B which threw a huge PA which they had sounded so amazing. Um, so I tend to use uh, my lower strings for effect. So I might go bomb, two, three, four at the end of a, fr at a phrase so they really sing out. Other guys may want to use them more for groove purposes. I don't do this quite so much, but say you're playing um, this bomb. Okay, that sounds really cool, but you could play equally play up the octave too. So it's a different flavour playing it down there. Some people like that deep earthiness which comes from playing down there. Or the other one is you might want to play more of a groove. Okay, or you might be more of a heavy metal guy, which he wants to. And you're actively looking for that more muddy sound. So it depends what you're going for there. So decide your tuning, whether you're gonna go for a low B or a high C. Step number three is pick your bass carefully. Uh, I might be somewhat stating the obvious here, but you need to choose your five string perhaps a little bit more carefully than your four string. The reason being is because we are adding effectively extra wood. It's a heavier piece of wood because these strings take up more space. So five string basses tend to be a little heavier than four strings. Not always, not 100% of the time, but it's worth being aware that they are bigger animals wider fretboards. Uh, some manufacturers like uh, the USA Sadowskis for instance will actually hollow out the body will actually hollow out the bodies to make them a little bit lighter but beware you are holding a heavier piece of wood which may have effects on your shoulder it might there might be a difference if you're doing a two-hour gig uh, you might suddenly start to really feel it by about the 90 minute mark so do be aware of the physicality of having a heavier instrument with more strings, an extra tuner, it does uh, add a little bit of weight to it that you need to be aware of. The next, the next one is be aware of your string spacing as well. Five strings tend to come in a slightly uh, wider variety of string spacings, I found, or you can spec up your string spacings if you're having a five string made for you, but be aware of it. This is a 19 millimeter bridge I know that I've got in here, uh, which gives us a very wide distance uh, between all the strings here. It's similar to a four string, but what some of the five strings will start to do is actually maybe uh, do a 16 or 17 or 18 millimeter bridge. I think the lowest I've ever seen is 16, but that starts to really pull everything together so the, the um, fingerboard isn't quite so wide uh, which is cool it can give you technically on your hand here uh, it could give your hand a little bit of an easier time so that's something worth considering but the flip side of that if you're into slapping for instance like that it can make it harder to get your accuracy on a four string the amount of uh, five string rather the amount of players that i've seen who when it comes to the slap solo on a gig for instance will suddenly jump back onto a four string because it's a lot lot easier to control and a lot lot easier to be accurate uh, so that is be aware of you the physicality of the instrument go into a shop try out a bunch of five strings and find out which one feels comfortable 
So step number four is all about five string bass technique. I'm gonna talk uh, about how I technically play the five string, my technique, and then I'm gonna show you another very popular or a technique that I think is gaining popularity at the moment. The first one, the first way that I play it is most of the time I effectively use the low B string as a thumb rest. If I was on a four string, that would be on the pickup, like so, but on this situation, I would play it there, and then I would go across like that, and then when I come back, my thumb would end up on the pickup like so. And that's when I drop back. So using that particular technique, which is the one I use is I have to be quite hot on my muting with my left hand. And those of you who are Bass Lab Plus and members who have done my Essential Technique course, for instance, will remember for the muting module that what I'm actually doing a lot of the time is say using my first finger here. If I'm on a fourth finger like this, when I'm playing a major scale, it's just this is just an example, I will have my first finger barring across like so. So that is how I take care of all the different, the muting aspects there. Uh, so, and this is a technique which varies from person to person. This is how I do it. And what I want you to gain from me saying this is have an awareness of your muting, that uh, your muting will get slightly, how can I put it, trickier, shall we say. It just gets more complex the more strings you've got and the more strings you've got vibrating, particularly those sort of lower strings, the more muddy things can get, particularly when you're going through bigger amps and uh, PAs and that kind of stuff. It can get more and more noticeable. But what I want to talk about very briefly is a technique that I've seen a lot of five string players use. You can use it on four string too. I don't use this too much, but I think it's kind of coming into my playing slowly. Uh, the first bass player I ever saw doing this, I remember clocking this many years ago, there's a great, great Welsh uh, bass player from over this way called Lawrence Cottle, who is a phenomenal world-class uh, uh, sort of jazz fusion type bass player. And I noticed him doing this thing with his thumb. I think the gig was at Ronnie Scott's, the, the famous jazz club in London. And and his thumb wasn't anchored here. It, go, it was suddenly moving up back and forth. And so he had this, floating thumb technique, which I thought was really, really cool. And so what it meant is he could rest on the strings that he wasn't using. And so his thumb would move kind of in parallel with what string he was on. And what it did was it flattened out the wrist there, which I think is a really, really, really cool idea because sometimes anchoring like that can put, with some people can put a load of unnecessary bend in there. But the cool thing was it actually took care of a load of his muting uh, down this particular direction, which I thought was really, really cool. So how we do this is it's just about laying your hand on the strings like so, and just moving back and forth. And then you literally play a standard sort of rest stroke um, like this, which lands into the string below like that and we just move back and forth it's not a technique that I've particularly developed and if you want to learn how to do that I would go and check out a specialist but I wanted you to know about that because I think it's uh, a technique that um, for multi-stringed instruments whether you're going to five six even the, the crazy monster seven strings or whatever is being aware of your muting and the physicality of what you're doing because we are again, dealing with a bigger piece of wood, is just so, so important. So step number five is all about to getting out there and gigging with the five string for the first time. There can be quite a big jump from playing a four string to a five string based from a sort of psychological perspective because everything looks a little bit different. And one of the classic things that can happen, especially when you're under pressure, when you're normally playing, um, say, a groove in E, uh, like... You could accidentally go... Thinking you're playing an E, but obviously you're playing a fourth out, a fourth lower, which is just completely wrong and often can clash horribly. So you've got to psychologically get used to having this extra string in there. So the first sort of tip I'd give you to do that is 
take your time. Uh, don't get your first five string and then take it out on uh, a gig or a church service or whatever, how, wherever your sort of musical outlet is. Spend a few weeks warming into it and making sure you feel comfortable. Use play alongs, all sorts of things to check that you sort of mentally clocked uh, that there is always this extra string there. The second uh, tip is actually just don't use the extra string for a few weeks. Uh, use it as a sort of glorified thumb rest with your with your with your right hand, um, and just play ordinary what you'd play on a four string, but on a five string bass. So you're not even thinking about these extra notes because what can happen is we want to we've got this new shiny object and we want to use these extra cool notes that are there. We want to. We want to start putting those notes in, but that can just confuse it if we're not sort of fully centered with the fact that there's an extra string there. So take your time with it. Play what you'd normally play on a four string, but on a five string, and then slowly integrate the new notes into there or the new possibilities in there over a period of time or the new hand shapes that, that, uh, that you've created from having these the extra string there. And what will happen over a period of a few weeks, a few months, is that you'll just learn how to play a five string and tune, choo, choosing, uh, changing from five string to four string now is something that I can do completely effortlessly. I don't think about it, I just adapt because I did that sort of groundwork right in the early days. So guys, that was my five steps to getting started with the five string bass. Don't forget to download the cheat sheet which comes with this and a bunch more information uh, below. There is a link to download the five steps to five strings. Uh, if you've enjoyed this lesson, please do like, comment or share. Let us know what you found most valuable. Let us know what your experiences were changing to the five string bass. Let us know if you're thinking about changing to the five string bass. Let's get a good old conversation going on below there. Uh, I've been James from ebassguitar.com and I will catch you next time.